she's not anything, you know, I, I assume she would look like. Oh, okay. there you, there you are. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. So I got to tell you guys, it's such a pleasure and it's been on my list for a while to connect uh, Karen and Dr. Joey, um, because you both are part of our cornerstone of uh, what's happened in Haiti and the development of HWB. And look at these four corners we got going here and now. Dr. Joey, Karen Allen um, responded to a phone call I gave her back in 2012 to come. Wow. Haiti to help. Uh, teach a group of interested um, students, you know, and that was our first class in Delma 33. And uh, she just fast tracked us. We came in April of 2012. And then again in June, July, and then again in September, September. we graduated in November that first class. And in addition, um, we visited Les Tenas and did some clinics. Wow. In the wow. And, and we, we went, went to Bellance. And we went over to Bellance and started the course over there. And that's when Lauren joined us and picked up the backside of things going on. So Laura, uh, Karen is the initial creator of the fundamentals course. Um, she's an extraordinary and well-respected educator and homeopath in the United States. Um, she's one of our best thinkers, dreamers, and creators of helping wow. to spread homeopathy in the United States and beyond. So this is Karen Allen well, and, yeah. and Dr. Joey. Well, yeah, I so. have heard all kinds of wonderful things about you. Thank um, you. Thank I you, met Dr. Joey, I think, I can't figure out if it was in November. At the university. November 2013 or March 2014. No. Remember, Karen, no, was, we used to stay was, over in Del Ma 33 area at uh, Sister's Place and hang out upstairs. And I stayed a few extra days and was wandering around the neighborhood and came upon this naturopathic school. They were training docs there. I went in to introduce myself and the curriculum and the director of the school was interested. We went through some of the details and then it didn't quite go so well because it turned out, well, he was really trying to look for if there was going to be some additional income coming from HWB. I said, oh, no, we're not that kind of a nonprofit. <laughs> and he said, oh, you have to talk to Dr. Prosper. <laughs> He works and for nothing. The rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Joey has the same passion um, yeah. is in, in focus in Haiti of trying to get homeopathy available to everybody throughout that country. Um, you know, Karen, um, thank you for what you've done. Uh, uh, what you have started along with um, Holly have assisted so many Haitians. And, um, and now we have... Um, Haitian physicians who are who are calling me um, every month. Um, I get tons of message. When is the next course? We too want to do the sub subspecialty and so forth. So um, imagine, and all of that is because of the result that homeopathy has uh, has given uh, lately. Uh, well, ever since we did the course, but lately, due to the COVID and so forth, and people even felt more the need and have been trusted more homeopathy because um, we have so many um, stories of, you know, patients who have been treated with um, homeopathy. So thank you for starting that. Thank you for helping starting that. That is uh, a great contribution to the healthcare in Haiti. It is, it truly thank is. Thank you. You know, I would love it if you could tell us a little more. I, I think the first time that I remember Holly talking with me, about you and about the work you were doing was during an earlier epidemic with chikungunya. That's correct. 
Can you talk a little bit about the work with that and what you saw with homeopathy? Well, um, I, I was a patient myself. Um, I, I didn't contract the chikungunya yet. Um, Holly and Lauren, um, and by then we've become very good friends. And um, I, I opened, well, they were, they, were, they were seeing patients at a clinic where I was practicing and my brother and I owned the place. And so um, it was a desperate time for people. Well, not desperate in the sort that it was um, fatal or anything, but it was desperate because people were in dire needs of something that would help them with the, with the pain that they were having mm -hmm. when having chikungunya eats, you know? And uh, so Lauren and, 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 and Holly left me with some, um, with some notes and some, some remedies. They said, with some instructions, if you or maybe one of your, or some of your patients have um, the, uh, the same or chicken gunia, depending on the symptoms of blah, 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 this is what they should take, right? And um, at this time, we were just giving people acetaminophen or paracetamol, which mm -hmm. didn't do much. Mm -hmm. So around 10 o'clock at night, I, I felt fever. And 30 minutes later, the joints, articulation, I'm saying it was, yeah. I, I could still it's remember to this day. Yeah, to walk to the bathroom, which is in my room. I had my own bathroom. It took me 15 minutes to just walk to get there. It was, it was severe. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, um, I, at this point, I'm saying to myself, I don't, even, I don't even need to waste my time taking paracetamol. And I'm around 11 o'clock at night, going on midnight, um, I figured, hey, I didn't believe in it, but I said, let me try it. So I took the remedy with the instructions that um, they had left me. I took it and, um, and um, I felt so bad that uh, uh, because the apartment is right above the clinic. Well, it's, it's a small hospital. And so I had called the nurse um, to come and take my vital sign because, you know, and um, mm -hmm. she told me I had a, my temperature was above 100. It was maybe around 101, I think. I'm not sure. So she would they would she would come every once in a while and, and, and check on me and um, there are two nurses that were doing rounds uh, it was her and a male nurse his name is simpson and so i took the remedy around uh, midnight and um it was amazing it was amazing within one hour i started feeling better and i'm like are you serious and and by two o'clock in the morning i was i was i was well i was well and the nurses were surprised to see me at five o'clock in the morning walking around the hospital. And, and I'm saying, I, I'm well, I'm good. So at first, I, I thought that this was just, uh, it could be random. It could be that uh, regardless of the, of the uh, remedy, that this would just go away. So then I, um, um, I emailed um, a Holly and I asked her, uh, I told her what happened and I told her that, um, I will divide uh, the patient that has um, um, chicken gunya. I will divide them into two, into two groups. And um, I, I think I just finished doing a research with um, University of Maryland on um, on, on cholera. And um, I told them, I told her that I want to try what what they gave me. And the response was amazing. It was I shared it with them. I said this is, I was very much impressed. And now I had a lot of patients coming to me asking, can I give them some of that medicine to give to their, to their relatives mm -hmm. when they have chicken gunya and so forth? I said, no, I can't do that. And then Holly um, proposed that we do a study, Holly and Lauren. And they, um, they gave myself and um, PG, they guided us on how we should do the study. And we did it in different sites, in Port-au-Prince, in... Um, in um, different areas in port au prince and in Lester. Lester is where I, I, I ran a telemedicine clinic. And the results were the same. And you know, in, in PG, he, he knew homeopathy, so he wasn't as surprised as I was, but he was impressed nevertheless. But he wasn't as surprised. I was like, this is what I'm telling you. Look at this. And it's, <laughs> it was obvious. So definitely, uh, you can imagine when, um, Holly um, told me that they are considering doing a, a course for physicians. And I'm, I'm saying, well, I'll put my name first. Yes, and, um, 
And so um, we went on. Uh, from there, when she came, we went to see the Ministry of Health. Uh, we had a few meetings going back and forth. They recommended us uh, a group of other people, and we were very uh, fortunate that uh, the uh, person in charge, who was a gynecologist, had experience with homeopathy and a very positive experience she had. So from there, they accepted our curriculum and, and they um, uh, uh, referred us to the Haitian Medical Association. We went there and that's where the collaboration started and that's where we provide the classes. So that really opened a lot of doors and it was, my experience was amazing, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. It's yeah. so encouraging to see how this has grown. And I'm so grateful to Homeopaths Without Borders and to Holly for the consistent leadership. I mean, she's just kept Oh, definitely. definitely. And HWP's <laughs> had a great board that's kept it going. And then Lauren took up the charge and was doing yes. the teaching for this class, right? She's, she's great. She's been doing great. It, let, let me tell you, um, um, a similar story happened a few months ago, three months ago. A cousin of mine caught, um, um, who had um, um, who was ill with liver issues and so forth, and uh, lip cirrhosis, and um, that was in a hospital in Guanaive, and he was really uh, his his case was severe. And after um, uh, Lauren took his case, and um, well, I took his case, Lauren took his case, and we agreed um, and and a, and a remedy for him, right, and. He, he felt so good with the, him and his brother. And his brother is one of our translators. They felt so, they were so amazed with the remedy that they made a short video. Oh, wow. Just, they made a short video to, 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 to show their gratitude to, uh, to homeopathy and also to Lauren. And, um, and, and, and he said the same thing. He said, well, when I took it, but I didn't really believe in it, but you know. And um, I shared it with I I shared the video with Lauren and and Holly. Yeah. So Lauren, would you share a little bit about your experience teaching? When thank you so much, Joey. I'm just oh, I'm so glad to have a pleasure. chance to talk with I, you. I, I'm so glad I could share this with you. I'm saying this is yeah. Yeah, mm. Lauren, could you talk about teaching that class? Um. In, uh, the medical profession oh, we're talking about, yeah. Okay. Um, so we've had two classes now with medical professionals, and uh, it's been absolutely delightful. Um, they are the first group. I would say was a little skeptical, uh, even though Joey had encouraged a lot of them to join up. They were, there was lively and wonderful discussion with these um, trained doctors, nurses, um, I think we had a social worker then too. And, you know, we had a lot of back and forth about, but do we, do we still do blood work? Do we still um, listen to heart? Do we still pay attention, um, you know, all their medical questions? And we had great discussions and it took a while for them to understand that they were still being doctors, all their skills, all their knowledge was still very important, but I was teaching them how to assimilate it differently. And then of course, prescribe um, a different medicine altogether. And I would say by the third session, I think we had everybody with us. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Everybody was on board and ready to, you know, really take it in. Um, and it, it, it was great. And I don't know, some divine intervention happened at, at one of the first clinics. We had a, a patient who um, was really in distress, emotional, has, was having kind of a hysterical reaction. Um, and they called me in and I treated her right in front of them all. And I had her stay and um, she, I, I mean, it was miraculous to me too, <laughs> but she improved right before our eyes and that was it. I mean, I think whoever was at all skeptical, finally. The second class 
was like the second generation of uh, folks who had heard from the first generation and they we just you know it was, it was a little smoother um and they were just really eager very eager to take it in uh i i think it would be different teaching physicians nurses pas nurse practitioners here in this country um but in haiti it was it's a beautiful thing <laughs> Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. So, Dr. Joey, um, we've had this conversation recently here about bioplasma and the organization that I've been building here, The Hub, uh, people pay subscriber fees and a quarter of those fees go to build the homeopathic profession and to contribute to service. And so all those subscribers part of their fees went to make a bulk purchase of cell salts, combination cell salts, bioplasma that you're going to be taking back with you. And I would love it if you could talk about, both you and Lauren, I'd like to hear from both of you about how that's used and how important it is for the people that you're working with there in Haiti. Well, uh, bioplasma is among the remedies that we never have enough of. Uh, for instance, I, I work a lot, I volunteer a lot in orphanages, in different orphanages uh, in Haiti. There are three particular orphanages where we have children. We have, I, have, I have at least 12 children every three months who have to do blood transfusion because of their um, congenitive um, uh, diseases and, um, uh, and um, sickle cell anemia as well. And, um, and you can imagine how bioplasma is helping with these kids in the orphanage as well, who have anemia. Other patients as well, but I want, I want to stress those particular kids because they are more vulnerable. And um, where the blood counts have been significantly raised since taking um, bioplasma. Not to mention that we have better uh, response to the immune system as well. So depending on the case, in certain cases, they have the patients, you know, will have them taking, you know, just the one tablet for a certain amount of times and in other cases for certain patients we'll put it in water you know uh, have prepare a bottle for them and teach them how to, uh, uh, how to use the bottle you know make sure that that bottle is you know is well kept and to take a sip you know uh, uh, so that's it varies a lot in how we use it but it has bioplasma we never have enough of it uh, it's something um, I, I, I tell Lauren and Harley all the time and, uh, and because we have certain cases of anemia and other cases also, and bioplasma, the advantage that you have of it is that uh, sometimes it even reinforces uh, the system while giving another remedy to the patients. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, That's fantastic to hear about. Yeah. I, you know, when I was there and we were working in the tent camps and we were in Balance and we were at Les Pinas, we were seeing pregnant women also who had some pretty definite nutritional deficits. And so we were using it with the pregnant women as well. And that's been one of the things, Lauren, that you've been working with the madrones, the midwives in Haiti. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and um, sharing and teaching homeopathy within that community and bioplasma for pregnant women? Mm -hmm. So um, we had the wonderful fortune of meeting eight. What was it, eight or ten? Eight. 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 Right. Okay. Um, um, midwives at um, a very large, uh, busy, busy, busy hospital right in the middle of um, Port-au-Prince and where they see 350 to 400 births a month. Um, and where the infection rate is very high and the most co largest complication is postpartum hemorrhage. Um, and with a, a, a culture that has very little internal resources, never mind the external resources, but in terms of iron stores, um, the stress of just a pregnancy on many of these women's bodies is, is huge. So bioplasma has been, again, a godsend for this um, sector of the 
uh, population for pregnancy, for lactation. Um, when I first met with the midwives, I gave them each a bottle of uh, bioplasma uh, and I think arnica and phosphorus. And they didn't really have enough um, knowledge or, or confidence to use the arnica or the, or the phosphorus right then and there because we hadn't really spent a lot of time with it. And, but they did use the bioplasma. And the stuff that they came back and reported was mind-blowing, you know, that they saw hemorrhages stop. They saw hematocrits um, jump up in, you know, a couple of days, three points, four points. Um, they just saw women bounce back from very difficult births. Uh, so they, they're another group that loves it, you know, and just is totally hooked on it. Mm -hmm. And... It's, so your gift is um, will just help so many people. Yeah, I'm super grateful that all the subscribers for the Hub are each putting their shoulder to this wheel to support what you guys are doing. I remember when we were in Balance, there was, or maybe it was in Port-au-Prince. Do you remember, Holly? We saw a baby that was very ill that died later, I think that day or the next day. And there was lots of discussion within the group about how do we support the little ones. And bioplasma certainly for the, to give to the mamas, I remember us saving, we only have a limited amount, let's give this to the nursing mamas because mm -hmm. then it's them and the baby that's benefiting. And so being able to distribute this so that it's helping those really vulnerable populations is just hugely important. I love hearing these stories. Is it a factor now for people that you're seeing with COVID? Is malnutrition a predisposition factor that's making the coronavirus issues worse or not so much? Uh, um, I, I would, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard, the, the reason I would say it's hard to say um, most of the patients I suspect that have COVID-19 have not been tested or when you send them to get tested, they don't get tested because people are afraid to get tested and so mm -hmm. forth. So I, I, I you know, I, I would say over 80, I would say close to 80% of the patients that I suspect with COVID-19 do not go and get tested, unfortunately, so. That's actually true in yeah. my practice as well. Okay. Either okay. the tests aren't available or the, people go to get a test and even though they have all the classic symptoms, the test doesn't come out positive. And so the testing end hasn't been so much, but we've been looking at what are the patterns of symptoms that people have. And you mentioned earlier, you know, these cell salts really do help with immune system oh, yeah. function. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. And so, uh, uh, just like we do with pregnant women, with uh, we do it the, the same way with malnutrition, with um, anemia. Um, bioplasma is always, you know, uh, you know, first stop. Yeah. So I've got one more question for you. Okay. How has has having homeopathy in your life, in your toolkit, as a physician, how has that changed you? Oh, it has. I, I have uh, the alternatives is, is very different. Is I have I have alternatives, you know. Um, whereas, um, for instance, um, I have a lot of patients, um, and you know, the field that I practice is internal medicine the most. And I have a lot of patients, you know, whether it's patient with congestive heart failure, whether it's patient with um, um, hypertension, diabetes, but diabetes especially, but uh, among other things, you know. Um, um, the last time I had a patient with um, pancreatitis, uh, uh, what happened is that some patients with some chronic diseases, uh, beside high blood pressure and diabetes, have been taking medicines for so long and are always on an antibiotics. And, um, and, and I find that over 60% of the patients that I have that has liver issues it's because of the abuse of medicine that they have been taking in the past years and so forth. Having 
the ability to treat these patients with medicines, remedies that have no secondary effect, that will have no effect on their lungs, in their kidneys, in their, in their, in their liver, is a significant change. But the reason for treating with homeopathy is not just because it has no secondary effect. Also, it's the well-being of the person, being able to have the, the holistic approach to treat that person. You know, I'm treating Joey. I'm not treating the malaria. Therefore, right. as, as a consequence, um, um, the well-being of, the, of that person has a better chance to have a better outcome. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's yeah. beautiful to hear. Lauren, do you want to say anything else about the work that you, you know, both you and Holly have been back and forth and have been so dedicated and diligent to this project for a long time. Do you want to say anything about how being involved in shepherding this project along through what? It's been eight years now, nine years. Mm. You want to say yeah. anything about what that's meant to you or how the process of that has changed you? Going to Haiti and the time I spent there changed me. And I'm curious about how it's changed you. Do either of you want to say anything about that? Mm -hmm. you know, for me, um, having the opportunity to get more intimate with another culture has um, just expanded um, my vision on life in general. And to be doing this side by side with Haitians is um, something I wouldn't want to ever have missed. Uh, they inspire me to be a good human, you know? Mm -hmm. um, they, they genuinely care about each other. They share. These medicines that are coming into this country, you know, they don't have a postal service, but Joey has organized a net, the network of 66 homeopaths throughout the country that it's going to get dispersed. You know, they just know how to do life <laughs> with very, very little, and it's an honor to share what we have. I, I would like to add something. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that happened um, is also Homeopathic Without Borders mm -hmm. under, under the guidance of, um, of, of Holly. The approach also is different than a lot of other um, NGOs where, where people are, are skeptic. What happens is that they take um, in consideration our culture. They take in consideration um, what, what, what our thoughts are. They, they take our, our opinion in, in consideration. And therefore, we deal with the reality. We deal with the reality of Haiti in, in a more um, a realistic approach. And I think that also helps with the success that uh, you know HWB, HWB had uh, have had in Haiti. Mm, thank you. Yeah, I think that's one of Holly's strengths is that she's always said, "We're not here to take our ideas and put them on you. We are here to hear your ideas and help Correct. you with them." Correct. Yeah. She and, really and led and what, cultural what, partnership. Yeah, and what's great about it at the end of the day. It's not about us, the physician or, or the people who are treating. It's about the patients, you know, what is best for the patients. It's never what's best for them. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, I, I even feel, you know, I'm like, I, I feel a little bit bad because the sacrifices they make. Or even when we go far out in the provinces, you know, and, you know, if we have to stay in the bush, we stay in the bush. <laughs> and, you know, they cope so well. It's, 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 it's amazing. Uh, Harley and Lauren, it's amazing. I, I, I truly thank them for that. They have been an incredible inspiration for me. I remember one time when we were in Balance and we had clinic out in the park in the center of the little village. And there were different groups of us. There were some that were in the gazebo. And I was off at one end under a tree with my group of like six or eight students around me. And there was somebody came up with the idea of a number system. Do you guys remember this? Mm -hmm. 
And so one of the Haitians whose job was organizing, who was really good at it, wrote out all these little number tickets. And the word went out to the whole community, that whole region, we're having clinic. Show up. Mm -hmm. It starts at this time. Come get a number. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, then uh, they would all show up and they would just, whoever the next number was, they would direct them to whichever group was next having an opening. And each of the homeopaths there had a group of the students there who were learning. And at one point, there was a very, very elderly lady who came walking up to our group. And she said through the translator, I would like to be seen. I have a health problem and I would like someone to take care of me. And I said to, it was like maybe three o'clock in the afternoon and we'd been at it all day. We were gonna work for maybe another hour and then it was gonna be done. And I said to the translator, does she have a number? Is she our next client? And the translator talked with her and he said, no, she just got here. She doesn't have a number. And I said, can you send her over to get a number and have her you know, sit down, get in line. We'll be glad to talk with her. He said they ran out of numbers about an hour ago, so she doesn't get a number. And I said, okay, can you ask her to just come back tomorrow? And he talked to mm -hmm. her for a few minutes and she got this really sad face. Yeah. She turned and she started to walk away. And the translator said to me, she started walking at dawn to get <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and she yeah. walked for ten hours to get here. Yeah, yeah. So, so I sent one of the students to go get her, and she was the next person that we saw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful. The the effort that people go through to become part of these clinics the way that they show up with good heart and best intention yes. in yes. all the different places that we were, in the tent camps, in Les Penances, in Belens, just trying to get some help and how eager the students were to see how this works, to be of service in their communities. It's, a, it's an incredible it. gift to see and to be part yes. of. You know, just... You know, just to be able to make this difference. I, I feel that, you know, people thank us all the time, but I, I feel it's the other way around. The fact that you have the ability to help people. And, you know, at the end of the day, you could say to yourself, okay, I'm at peace with myself. Uh, this is what I did. This is what, you know. So it's, yeah, yeah I identify what you say. That is, that is awesome. Yeah. Lauren, do you want to say something about working with the midwives, with the madrones? Oh, um, uh, it was an, a privilege. Uh, I learned so much. Um, you know, I, I thought I was pretty uh, resilient and uh, having been a home birth uh, midwife for over 20 years, you learn to think on your feet, you learn to utilize things that when you didn't have what you needed, you just make do. Um, these women and men surpass that, <laughs> you know, I just, um, I, I personally loved it. Uh, you know, I feel very at home with, in the birthing, uh, milieu, the medicines. I mean, what I was going to say in general, uh, about being in Haiti, <clears throat> was I was amazed at how fast the medicines work, even myself. You know, I've been practicing for, you know, 40 plus years now. And I still, you know, was talked this my, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know. And, and it's almost like I didn't really have to do much. It just, yeah. And that, and to see the midwives who see so much death, so much, I mean, you, all of the Haitian physicians, nurses do. But these women um, and men see babies die, women die giving birth all the time. And um, they had hope after we taught them. They had hope that we now have something that we could help 
save life, literally to save life. Wow, that's a beautiful message. Mm. I want to thank all of you so much for your time, and it's such a privilege, Dr. Joey, to get to meet you after we've heard about each other for years. And to well, ask the privilege is all mine. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure, always. Do you have any last thing that you'd like to share with the homeopathic community here in the U.S.? More than share, I, I, I just, I, I, I hope that you realize, I want them to realize how much of a difference that, you know, their support has made toward the Haitian communities, you know? Um, and so I, I feel like um, I'm the voice for Haitians and I know the difference it has made. So I want to thank them for that. And I hope they keep supporting us with that because that really um, save lives. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Blessings you, to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye.